Well, hello everyone. I'm Darren and welcome to Level Up Double E Lab. I'm doing something a little different in this episode. I'm actually doing a revisit back to an episode that I did prior. In this case, that's on my HF transmitter project. And I'm going back to redo the gain compression measurements that I did back in episode 11. If you have been watching my channel, you will know that those were two RF preamps that I measured in that episode. And I've actually got a couple of great questions that came up from you guys. The first one was, why not look at the output of those amplifiers on a spectrum analyzer? And the answer is, of course, I can do that. I've got my uh, home-built spectrum analyzer right here that I featured on many episodes. And of course, I use my uh, 465 Tektronic scope as the display for that. So we'll take a look at those, uh, both the uh, 2N5109 version and the IRF510 version. And a second point that was brought up that was actually a very good point is when I was calculating the gain compression, I was doing it in a very gross manner, meaning I was using this power meter right here, which is just taking the sum total of all the components in the RF uh, coming into it. So it would be the fundamental and all the harmonics. And the point that was raised uh, was in order to do a proper gain compression, you really should be looking at just the fundamental frequency. So I don't disagree with that at all. So I thought I would take another stab at that uh, measurement technique today. Okay, so to make these measurements, I really wanted as close to a pure input signal as I could get. I'm only going to test the 40 meter band. And uh, as good as my HP signal generator is, it definitely has a noticeable second uh, harmonic. And what I did here, um, use the tools that I have. I've got my antenna module for this project and I plugged into it the 40 meter low pass filter and it did a great job. And I'll show on screen now what the output of the HP looks like going through that filter into the SA. And I'll uh, turn the signal on and off so you can see which one it is. And there is no second or higher harmonic showing up, at least down to the about the minus 95 dBm noise floor that my home build SA has. So it's not commercial grade. I'm a couple orders of magnitude off from commercial grade, but it's definitely good enough for what I want to do here. Now the rest of the setup, of course, I've got the amplifier right here. I've got 30 dB of inline attenuation from the output before it goes into the SA, and then my SA has an attenuator that I can adjust as well, so it's also set to 30 dB. So I got 60 dB of attenuation, and what that means is I had to also change the reference level on the SA. So the top of the screen I've adjusted that's plus 40 dBm, so it's pretty high, which puts the middle of the screen at about uh, 0 dBm, which will work fine for these measurements. So we'll get a, a good centered uh, pip here when we, we look at the results. So I'm going to switch the camera over now so we can uh, get a closer view of the display. All right, I've reset the camera, so let me turn on the signal generator now, and I have it set for minus 30 dBm of input signal. So this pip here is at about plus 16 dBm. Remember, this is about this is zero. That's 10, so that's plus 16. Now I'm going to increase the input in 1 dB intervals here, and we can start to see distortion products appearing. I'll get up to minus 20, and they're really becoming significant. The second, third, and fourth harmonics. And notice how, as I keep going, they're jumping up much faster than the fundamental. The fundamental has started to compress. It's uh, reached its peak. It's no longer responding linearly. The other thing I can do here, I can change my SA for 2 dB per division. So let's take a closer look at that pip at 2 dB per division. Okay, I've reset my spectrum analyzer here for a 2 dB per vertical gradation here. And I've got the input set to minus 30 dBm, and I'm going to change it in 2 dB increments. And it's following linearly now, of course. It's changing basically 2 dB for each 2 dB of input until I get to minus 20. And then it starts to lose that linearity. So we're seeing visually that fundamental uh, frequency response pip starting to fall behind. And so it looks like it's happening right around minus 20 dBm, which is what I saw from the gross measurement. So in the case of the uh, 2N5109, I really didn't uh, miss the, the true value by that much by just using my, my regular power meter. Okay, I've changed the setup. I've taken out the 2N5109 version of the amplifier we were just looking at, and I put in the IRF510 version. 
Everything else in the setup is the same. I still have uh, 60 dB of attenuation from the amplifier output before it gets into uh, the spectrum analyzer. So the scale should still be the same. I'm going to set the signal generator to minus 30 dBm input and let's take a look. And right away we see a problem. And here's the fundamental. It's at about plus 22 dBm. So that's about in the range I would have expected. But here's all these second, third, and fourth harmonics showing up. And of course those guys are jumping up much faster than the fundamental as I increase it. So that's not expected behavior. I'm going to shut this down here as I continue talking. I say it's not expected because looking back at my LT Spice simulation, I was not seeing what visually looked like a distortion of the output signal until I got above uh, input power minus 30 dBm until like minus 26, minus 28, somewhere in that range. It was close, but still not right at minus 30. Um, and that's surprising. Now, uh, definitely didn't see that on the 2N5109 output. That had a pretty clean single pip there at the fundamental, at least down to the about minus 95 dBm noise floor that my uh, SA has. So there's definitely something not quite right with the IRF 510 amplifier. And I guess I should have been a little more critical uh, when I was looking at the results in the prior video, meaning there was clearly evidence that the output was not linear. I'll put that video back on screen. You can see that even if you assume for the moment I had a clean sine wave input, the output's definitely not clean, even at minus 30 dBm of signal. There's something there that's amiss. So what does that mean? Well, in the short term, the solution is simple. I'm just going to use the 2N5109 amp for building out the rest of my HF transmitter and just roll with it. I think it should work fine. But I'm not going to be able to leave well enough alone what might be amiss with the IRF 510 amplifier. So. What I'm going to do, try to do this logically, I'm going to of course check first of all that I built it correctly. Did I make a, a mistake in the component selection and build up say one of the stages with the wrong bias? So definitely check to make sure it's populated right. I don't suspect I'm going to find any errors there but I'll check again anyway. And then if that looks fine then I'm just going to break it down by stage and take a look at if I put a clean input, say, into the first stage of the, the three stages, what is the output like? Is it clean or isn't? And then do the same thing with the second stage. I might have made a mistake with uh, impedance uh, mismatch. And I'm showing on screen as I've been talking here for a while the actual schematic of what I built. And for sure, if you guys see something that looks odd, I'm definitely not an expert at building this uh, type of amplifier. I put together what I thought were some best ideas from other amps that uh, I saw. And, and if you remember my specs, I was trying to target say with a minus 20 dBm signal from 7 megahertz up to 21 megahertz getting plus 27 dBm output, half a watt, so I could drive the final amp. That's really the main goal here and of course it's going to handle CW as well as single sideband so I'd like it to be all class A if possible. And that's another thing, last comment I make about what my design here, it may have just not been class A at all. It could be a class AB and this is just what I expect to see. So anyway, if you see anything you'd like me to look at, anything that looks odd or like me to check, by all means leave a comment below and I'll check it out. So thanks very much for watching this bonus episode. I hope you uh, enjoyed a second deeper look at what I'm trying to do here and until next time, bye for now.